So uh, obviously you, you and uh, Kevin went to college at different times, but what, can you tell us what your first memory or impression of, uh, was of Kevin? I never saw him in college. I never even stepped on the same mat as him. My, coach, my coaches that got me to where I was at, they honed in everything. It wasn't Grand Valley or the university that got to me where I was at. It was my hard work and the great coaches that helped get me there. And it wasn't just one. That's why I say I'm fighting for them. Because anytime I ever had a chance to handshake somebody or get a pat on the back, or Tony, you can do this, man. One more fucking lap. And I wasn't always number one. But that's what got me here. I was always chasing after the best. Chasing after the best is what's gonna make you better. So with this kid, he's not the best. I have my head right now, though, he's bigger than Verdun. He's bigger than any of the giants that are out there because that's what I'm picturing. That's what I was training with. If he's juiced to the gills with those growth hormone bumps that he has, just like John Jones, that's fine. I prepared. I was wearing 50 pounds. I just got out of the hyperbolic time chamber, man. Straight up, man. I spent probably, what, maybe three, four years in there and it only took me, what, four weeks. That's what it felt like, man. I'm an animal right now. I was 100, 195 pounds, 200 some odd pounds, two times after Khabib had that fallout. And I lost all that weight because I wanted to point and prove to these guys that that's bullshit. You can do this and you need to find somebody new and, and close your circle up with some people that actually want to see you succeed. Tony, you, you said that Kevin's talked his way into this opportunity. Do you think there's someone who actually deserves this spot more than him on the lightweight roster at the moment? Absolutely not. Nobody else wants to sign on the dotted line. You have Connor who wants to either go box. You know, I can't really make fun of Connor no more. You know what I mean? We're both grown men, we have kids. I'll still call him McNuggets, because he's fake as fuck. But the thing is, is like Alvarez was busy. Khabib was fat. Tier must do Tuesdays. I mean, shit, you can't get away from that. You know? It's just, you got to center in that circle, man. And you got Alvarez and you got Justin Gaethje. Justin Gaethje just got into the UFC. How did he make it all the way to number four? I don't know. Why? Because I beat everybody. I sent them packing. They're gone. They're in different weight classes. The only person that was really legit was Edson Barbosa, and I was down to fight Edson again. Give everybody a bloody fight that everybody won, which is amazing. That's what we prepared for. This guy was the only one that wanted to sign on the dotted line, that had the balls, that had the gumption, and the mouth to back it up. A perfect dance partner for a guy like me. So is there a level of respect then, because he chose to fight you and he wanted this fight? Of course, you always have to respect your opponent. I don't ever disrespect my opponent. He wanted to talk his way into it, through Fox. That shit was set up, man. It was completely set up the whole entire time. I could read through bullshit. I was a bartender, man. I can tell when the glass is half empty or half full. The people who want to put it out there and they want to be fake, they're blocked. Guaranteed. Like I said, nobody's going to like me when I get to this spot. If they were nice to me in the beginning, that's perfect. I'll be nice to everybody. You know what I mean, Fred? So what I'm trying to say is, he's the only one that was available. He's the one that had the balls, and I knew that he was going to train his ass off. So hat off to him. But come Saturday night, huh? I'm not gonna bring the animosity to You can talk sticks and stones as much as you want, but you'll never break me. So you mentioned that twice since Khabib fell out, you've been around 200 pounds. How is this weight cut going for you? <laughs> Easy, very good, because I'm a wrestler. I always had to make weight the day before weigh-ins. My coach even tells me, he's like, you know what, you should never miss weight. And that was my pops, that was Jeff. He's like, you never miss weight. I miss weight like one time. You gotta uh. We drove all this way and all of that. You gotta do this. But seriously, the funny part is you don't fuck around. You don't miss weight. I knew myself. I was like, if I got up to that weight, I had to lose it. I got back up to that weight, I had to lose it. And what that did was made me mentally tougher. And it made me hungry. I was almost, I could eat like gravel and crush that shit in the sand. And mold it in my hand and spit it back out. And these dude would not know what to do with the man, straight up. So because you've been so professional about weight cutting, when someone like Khabib has struggled, does that irritate you? Is that unprofessionalism? Uh, I called it out on stage. Like I said, I can call anybody else's bullshit, no matter what. I can't read the future, I'm not Mystic Mac that wants to go and portray everything that I did beforehand. Like literally, I was calling out my Dars jokes from Mike Real beforehand. You know, management point of, you know, whatever. I don't give two fucks, that's a completely different story. We're here right now with Khabib. He's gonna be watching from the sidelines, I guarantee it. With his manager and everybody else. But like I said, there's so many other things to worry about in this world and to worry about little things like that. So a weight cut, if he can't handle it, I'm gonna say, I already talked to Dolce, man. We're ready to buy him a gift certificate. You know, get him on his side. But I guarantee you Dolce's on my side because I do it right. <laughs>